Good morning. Good morning. Let me see if we got some comments. Good morning. Let me know that you're here. And uh, it's just me today, all by myself <laughs> in the corner. Uh, welcome. Let me know that you're here. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the new colors that released this week. It's, we call it our new color round two. So, uh, and surprisingly, a few people said that they actually missed round one. But uh, this is more like, I feel like our sliding into winter regal colors. Good morning. Thank you, Michelle and Christine. Good morning. Thanks for joining me. Taylor's out this morning. She's a busy lady, and I will talk about that in a minute once we get more people on, but good morning, good morning. I love it. Oh, Whitney's there too. Debbie and Lisa and Lynette, good morning. Yes, good morning from Iowa. It's beautiful here right now. We always seem to talk about the weather. It's beautiful. It's uh, We've got that fall going on. It's my favorite time of the year. A couple of lives ago, I did fall colors and fall leaves, and that is my jam. That's my favorite. Good morning. Good morning from Canada and Illinois and Michigan. Good morning. We just made a trip up around Wisconsin last weekend and went to like La Crosse and Madison and Sheboygan and saw some old friends. So, oh, and Robin's from Wisconsin. I don't know what part, but yeah, we kind of did the touristy thing up there and saw friends. So it was kind of fun. Um, beautiful area up there. So Good morning, Colorado Springs. Good morning. Um, uh, this week on Tuesday, our new colors released. Uh, four new colors. Uh, some of them like have a, I feel, regal vibe, and some of them, especially the jalapeno and the cinnamon, had a uh, upcoming Christmas theme to them. So you'll see next week, maybe I didn't let the cat out of the bag, I do not have a sneak peek for you today. Hopefully, you don't all leave now. Please stay. Uh, we are doing our Christmas release next week, and Taylor's so excited about it. So here's my sneak peek for you. You get to see Taylor at 10 a.m. tomorrow. How exciting, right? She's doing a, I don't know if you guys have gotten emails. I haven't seen one. But she is going to be back here live at 10 a.m. on Friday and on Monday, and then of course on her Tuesday usual. So you're gonna get to see the sneak peeks that way. So I'm just gonna let you guys wait until tomorrow because she's going to reveal more to you than um, I would have. So uh, anyway, join her, come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'll be in the background, but come back and join us and we will be talking Christmas. So good morning everyone from everywhere so I'm, I'll just show you this is I'm talking about the new colors and this is my card that we're gonna walk through this today so uh, yeah and I think that's it so 10 a.m. Friday which will be tomorrow Monday and then Tuesday Central Time of course you can see Taylor three more times this week I feel like she's been on a lot of lives so um, yeah let's get down and I'll show you my cards swap you down. These are what I'm going to show you today. Um, nothing super technique -y new, just a few tips and tricks there, but I mainly wanted to showcase the new colors because I am very excited about them. I'm super excited about these two. Granted, I love them all. I felt like we needed this kind of green in the TE line. It's deeper. It's more Christmassy, as I want to say. This is our cinnamon, which I'm not, I don't use a ton of brown, but it's the perfect brown for centers uh, of flowers. I'm still reading comments. Thank you, Debbie. That was cute. You missed me. Oh, yeah, because Taylor took my live the last round. So, um, and you're going to get to see her more again, too. So, um, that's the cinnamon, and it's the perfect color for, like I said, it got distracted there, centers of flowers. And also something that uh, is coming next week with Christmas that it's perfect for. So you'll see, I don't, can't let the cat out of the bag on that one yet. This is the Sour Gummy, uh, which if I had to pick my favorite, I am a teal greenish blue tone. And this is very similar to what I just did our rec room in or our family kind of room. I did one wall in this because it's pretty strong and kind of dark, but we did one accent wall in it and I still love it. I think my husband thought I was crazy until we were all done. Good morning. I'm still seeing tons of good mornings. And then this is Huckleberry, which I also really love. I love them all for different reasons, but um, 
standing alone, these two are probably gonna be reached for quite a bit. So, and then these are both really good to have as our accent colors in our, in our, what do you call it, catalog, our repertoire. So anyway, I'm gonna talk about these, and these I think would be a very mass producible Christmas card set. So I used a stamp set from, it's an older one, it's called Inside Scoop Christmas Blessing, and this is probably a saying that was probably supposed to go in the inside, but I really wanted to fill in the, the center of this. Now, if you all don't know, because I'm sure you've seen me use this on a live in the past, I love Twiggy. I the background I love it I feel like if it can be used even like just winter because I there are you can tell maybe a holly leaf here and there but I don't think it overly screams Christmas to me so it's one of my favorites and I'm gonna talk to you how I use that and how I set up my misty so let's get my misty in here when you use backgrounds we have of course our misty uh, grid mat the papers that go in your misty but I also really love um, utilizing like that for positioning and I know you can of course ink up your background set your cardstock on it and then close the door to pick up your paper like if you put some tape runner on the back of your paper here if you if you ever want to center something this works great but I'm gonna show you a different way that I do it. Um, if you put a little tape runner on the back of there and then you close your misty this way, then you'll be certain that, oh, I didn't pick it up, sorry. <clears throat> Listen, I'm trying not to put much tape runner. Can you tell it's working for me? So it'll pick up your paper, that's hilarious, and it'll be centered. The way that I choose to do it, especially with something like this where your stamp is probably gonna be dirty um, and you need to keep replacing, I actually take my grid mat, put, push it down in this corner. I will use my magnet to make sure it stays there. And then I like to ink it up with just some sort of ink that's easy for me to clean up. So I picked toffee. And even originally I picked toffee. I, whatever color, I just one that's easy for me to clean up. Yep. T Whitney saying, make sure you join us tomorrow if you weren't there. Uh, Oh, someone said, yes, uh, join us tomorrow, 10 a.m. It will be Taylor. Uh, she is going to sneak peek next week's release. If you didn't hear me say that, tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central Time. So what I like to do is now I've stamped that, and that's where my stamp is going to land every time. So I do have to clean this up because I don't want my Versamark to have toffee on it. So we will clean that up. Let that dry for a minute. But then th what I like to do is, I've already got tape runner on the back of this one, so I'm not, I don't have to reapply tape runner. This is one of my favorite things, it's, and I know we've talked about it before, but it's the repositionable scrapbook adhesive. I like it for just this reason, so that I can tack my stuff down. But if you can see there, can you see how I can still see that pattern? Especially if you had a background stamp that had a straight line, you would be able to line up just perfectly. So it did land within my misty grid here. We mapped out an opening that's A2 for you and that's rectangle and where I put my stamp is pretty close. But this way I can take my piece that I wanna stamp on and center it. And then I know, I can see all the edges. I can see that I'm about an eighth of an inch away on all four sides of my cardstock. And for this one, it's just important so that my oval opening lands in the middle where I want it. So that's the way I do it when I'm trying to do something mass produced like this. And you know what? I skipped a whole step, so I gotta back up. I skipped a whole step. On these, if you notice, I love when I wanna tell you something and I just wanna jump right into that. Um, if you notice, there's kind of a hue or a halo that I did with these. So uh, with kind of thinking about the new colors, which this is Sour Gummy, um, with the new colors, one of the things I wanted to do, and I know this isn't like an inspiration as far as like a color combo, I always like to, especially with dark colors, even with light, it doesn't matter, I like to figure out what other colors I like with it. So when I'm doing a blend with a stencil 
or even with this, I, I want to add an accent piece of cardstock. I like knowing what colors that I like to put with it. So with the Sour Gummy, and this is just my personal choice, um, you might decide you want to go in a different route with it. The Sour Gummy Tropical Punch Blue Raspberry and Confetti Cake, and I did bring my ink pads with me also. Those, as far as cardstock and ink, are what I felt went best with my Sour Gummy. And that way next time if I want to add dimension with a stencil, uh, you know how like Taylor's always adding an extra color. I am such a light hand that sometimes I'm able to use the same color, light handed and then a little darker. And sometimes I don't have to go find another ink pad. But for Taylor, um, she, she will sometimes come in with a darker color ink. So this way I know and I can keep this as what I want next time if I want cardstock and what goes together well. So I did that and I'll show you with each one here in a minute. But with that, what I like to do then is I chose the lighter color, which is Tropical Punch. You could go down however far you wanted and you could ink blend into the middle however far you wanted using these colors. But I chose to do the Tropical Punch and I'm just gonna come in around the edges with that Sour Gummy, if you can see that. So it kind of looks like it's glowing in the center. Um, I just think it turns out really pretty. And I'll, I'm gonna walk you through ink blending this one in the Huckleberry, and then I'll walk you through the last two that I'm not gonna ink blend, because I need a minute for this ink to dry on my cardstock so that I don't have trouble with my embossing powder. So let's get my ink stand in here and the Sour Gummy. And you can use whatever brush you want, but I chose our navy blue brush handle just because it's darker. I didn't want to use the teal. And then with this, being these are new ink pads, they are very saturated. And I do like to start from the outside and work my way in. So, and I could have used the glass mat for this too, which I could grab that. I'll grab it for the next one. But I like to start off so I don't get too much saturation. And then I only come in, I don't know, about an inch or two all the way around. I'm gonna ink blend. I love a new ink pad, isn't it just great? It's all juicy with the um, ink. It's well saturated. It makes blending a breeze. And this, if you do see any darker spots, which I can see one right there, it will not matter because once this dries back, it'll lighten up a little bit. And also, once we uh, put this gold embossing powder, which I'm also going to try silver because I think silver would be beautiful. We're going to try one with silver today. Uh, I think it would be stunning. Or sorry, the silver is going to be stunning, but that blend will kind of be covered by a little bit of this background. So I apologize. I sound stuffy today. I think it's allergies. I went to the doctor yesterday and they're like, you're fine. So I just have to Hopefully, once we get a good frost here in Iowa, I might find some relief. But the doctor said everyone's complaining about the dry. We did get some rain in Iowa uh, earlier this week. I came down in a deluge, but I was thankful for any bit that we got. So, she's, so let's just keep ink blending and I'll hold this up so you can see a little bit better. Can you see how the center is kind of glowing a little bit? Um, that's just because I only put the dark around the outside. I mean, you could go down to blue raspberry and do two blends of tropical plunge and then sour gummy. I was on the idea that if this was Christmas cards, how I could make it simple so you could make a lot. So that is that, the sour gummy one on blue raspberry. I'm gonna set that one aside because I want that to dry a little bit. Then I'm gonna bring in my, this happens to be Plum Punch. And I'm gonna show you this. Oh, I meant to stamp this this morning and I forgot. Let me get my sour gummy out of the way. But you can understand where I was going with this. So Huckleberry is the darkest color, which is what I chose for this. And then Lavender Glaze would be my lightest. I stamped over here passion fruit which i plan to take one of those inspiration stamps and add it up here in passion fruit because if i'm using ink i'm probably going to pick passion fruit but beings we haven't been able to get that cardstock back in 
I'm going to use Plum Punch. I feel like I can get away with it. So uh, that might be my swap if I can use ink. But if I'm using cardstock, I thought that worked pretty good. And so I have a piece of Plum Punch here. I'm going to move it to the left a little bit so I'm not running so much into that sour gummy because sometimes you can even pick up that color off of your mat. So, and actually I said I would do it on the glass mat. So let me grab the glass mat because this works too. So you have less waste of your ink. And then we can just clean that up easy peasy. We won't have to worry about picking up any more ink. So let's grab that. My ink stand, which I love when I use uh, my ink stand because it all stays in place and doesn't have to, don't have to chase it around. I love this, Lisa, I'm sorry. I know we're not supposed to pick favorites, but I really like the sour gummy too. So Huckleberry is very pretty too, but I really like that sour gummy. Probably, I mean, I liked it so much before Taylor even had it. I was using it as a paint for my family room. So eh, that's what happens. <clears throat> the other good part about using the glass mat, if you looked, I tapped off over here so I can pick up that ink. So, and like I said, then I can spray this with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I will not have to worry about, like I said, with the sour gummy picking up any of that ink. I've had it happen with light colors before. It really does make a difference. Like if you have used a piece of temporary tape and you have ink on it, it'll pick up from there. If it's still wet on your uh, grid mat, you can pick it up from there. So anyway, so again, this is Plum Punch and I am adding a little bit of huckleberry, just lightly, as much as I can, around my edges. And I wanna, I'll show you the jalapeno and the cinnamon next, but I wanted these to have a chance to dry a little bit. All right. I am very excited about uh, the Christmas release. There's some really cute things in there and I'm already got my wish list going, so I'm excited for you guys to see it on Tuesday. Around here, we work so far ahead. You know, we're talking about Christmas in May, so it's really kind of funny to me to sit back and when you guys get to finally get to see the release, I'm like, oh yeah, I've moved on to the next thing. So it's kind of funny. I find in this industry, I almost forget to decorate the house because I've already moved on to Valentine's Day or whatever it might be. So it's kind of funny. All right, this one's really got that really nice glow in the middle so and not a lot of ink wasted so the glass mat is a total champ for that let me move this out of the way again huckleberry passion fruit lavender glaze but if i'm using the cardstock i'll switch to plum punch so that was the colors for that one set that one aside and then let me clean this it's the other awesome part no waste right we just use a little we have a spray bottle with rubbing alcohol in it 90% if you can find it. And then you can just clean it up and you're on to the next thing. Right? Love it. Okay. And I will bring that back in later. All right. So I want to show you the jalapeno and the cinnamon next. So my jalapeno, this is the card I made for that. Um, I might grab even a new piece of paper. I find the blend distracting, so the glass mat is great for that. So the jalapeno is our darkest, newest color. And then cilantro would be the next, what I chose to be the next lightest, Peapod and Granny Smith. I'm a huge fan of lime zest, but I felt like it was too bright with this one. So those are the colors that I, that I personally thought. I would encourage you to sit down, take your cardstock. What I do is I take my cardstock and I just start laying them on each other, comparing and seeing what I like. And I'll throw it back in the bin or whatever. That's my favorite way to go about doing it. So that's how I came up with the blend for that one. So again, I used cilantro cardstock and I just took a light blend in all the way around. I wanna make sure I'm not lying on that. Yep, it was cilantro. For a second, it almost looked kinda of light. I thought it was pea pod. But no, I started with cilantro and then went around the edges with the jalapeno. And I think the gold is gorgeous on here. And I love the Christmas vibe. So. Good addition to our uh, collection of colors. The next one I was really kind of hesitant about 
And I did not make a card up for this one just because I only had two colors that I put together and that was the new cinnamon and toffee. So I didn't make up a little inspiration card for it. But toffee and cinnamon I thought went well together. I didn't come up with any other dimensional ones that we have. I mean, you could always throw uh, buttercream frosting on that, but I just didn't think it was worth a inspiration card. But this was toffee and I came in around the edges with the cinnamon and I was kind of hesitant because normally we don't make a full card out of a, a brown color, but I thought it turned out really pretty with that gold. It all came together really well. Don't tell, don't tell Heather I said that, that I don't use a lot of brown or toffee. I try sometimes. So that was that one. And then while I'm still waiting for my panels to dry, I'm gonna bring one more thing in to show you. And this is also, I showed this with uh, color release number one, uh, that when I get a new ink pad, one of my favorite things to do is to see how it blends and how the color tone fades out. These, I did not do that. I used my inspiration cards that I already had. Again, this is just toffee and cinnamon, um, but I did the same thing. I, with these, I did, I did all my colors and I just made it lighter and lighter so that I could kind of see how these colors actually ended up working together with ink and I thought they turned out great. But I am gonna show you what I'm talking about that I did with, I did a live on it with the color release for part one, even though we didn't call it part one at the time, but um, this one is the Sour Gummy, but I did use Sour Gummy Tropical Punch. And I'm saying that backwards because when I ink blend, I always start with my lightest color because otherwise you're gonna pick up darker color. If you start from your dark and ink, try to ink blend to light, your brush is gonna grab some of that darker color and you're really gonna muddy your colors, not really muddy, but. Um, so I started with Confetti Blueberry, or confetti blueberry tropical punch and then my sour gummy and I So that is how that those turned out just to kind of show you them quick again Huckleberry, but this one I did use being I had my ink. I used passion fruit um, And then lavender glaze. So that one is with passion fruit uh, Last Well not last but jalapeno again. I wasn't like oh, this is great for butterflies But I thought it was just great to try my colors and see how they came out as far as as actual ink and again cinnamon and just toffee and this again i used those two colors made sure i had a good center overlap and then faded off my toffee as much as i could so there's that one but this is something like i said i showed in the first color release a few months ago which is something that i just really love to do and i would encourage you when you get your first ink pads to do this and just try your new colors out and see what you think so this one i apologize i looked at the name last night i always forget one name right i think it's called tulip i apologize whitney if you can put this name up i forgot to check that this morning but i will take this one and i'm actually going to ink blend it this way so we can look at it so i get more of a blend area this one has been around for quite a while and I will line it up left to right, up down. I like to center. So I have a little bit of this one and a little bit of that top row, but pick just whatever your favorite stencil is. Doesn't have to be this one. Um, just a stencil with some good openings and pretty dense as far as the openings that are there. I'm gonna grab Sour Gummy just cause it's my favorite. And I will grab my brush back. And my biggest tip to you is, if you want your bottom right corner to be the darkest, start there and then let your hand lighten all the way up. So I'm gonna come in from that side and almost every time I do it, I'm gonna come in from the side that I want it to be darkest. And then I just work my way up and lighten my hand. And this will tell you what kind of variation you can get out of it, the color on its own. So this is a little different than my butterfly cards, but I didn't, because this is what I did the, a few months ago. I didn't want to show you the exact same thing, but it's good to kind of see all the tones that you can get out of one ink pad instead of having to grab another one, right? Then you know it matches, right? 
just love the depth of color in this one. I call it kind of a peacock blue. Am I right or is that crazy? It's called Art Tulip Stencil. So it's sort of right. Thank you, Whitney. This is an oldie, but if you guys haven't noticed, it happens to be one of my favorite because it kind of looks like leaves, but not. I'm a big fan of like greenery, as I should say. I love flowers too, but I also just love good greenery, leaves, branches, sprigs, that kind of stuff for my stamping. So I think that's good enough. I'm just gonna try to make my corner here a little darker. I really like the blend that I'm getting, or the light that I'm getting at the top where I've lightened my hand. And I always think, just think very, like I'm going to go light. Think I can press a little harder here and then I lighten up my hand so that all the way up to the top, I'm getting a lighter and lighter blend. So I'll pull this off. I'm not gonna finish a card with this, but I just wanted to show you. This is my biggest tip when you have a new ink pad to kind of experiment and you'll be able to make something with it. It's not like it uh, has to be tossed. It'll even though it's an experiment that makes for a very beautiful card background. Let's get this out of the way. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, I love it. So I'll bring in the one where I used all the colors. So this one, we have more of those lighter teal tones in there because that's what I picked for my combo of four. But look at how different that is, but look how beautiful that is. So you could do something very similar with this. And again, I did some watercolor splatters with the Oreo watercolor uh, only because I wanted to bring this in. Taylor brought this into the store. This is what I'm going to be putting in my cart for black splatters. Uh, she just brought this in. She's been using it here in the office and loves it. I just can't be trusted with splatters usually. It ends up everywhere. Last night I had them. I decided last night to, I was just going to bring these panels in and just show you the panels. And last night I had like an hour to myself and I thought, I'm just gonna try this. And I splattered with my Oreo watercolor and it's great, but it's just not as intense. It's almost kind of, uh, what do you wanna say, poppy seed? Uh, so I'm going to add that to my cart, but isn't that pretty? So that's something to do if you wanna to test your colors and just kind of see where they go. So let's clean this up and get this out of the way and I can get back to my Christmas cards. I love cleaning up my stencils this way because the alcohol then also dries so fast that if you, like I switched in between all four of those colors to make those cards and they went very quickly to be able to do this. I didn't have to dry. Do you guys remember when I used to say I dried my uh, stencils with towels, put stencil between two towels and then I used my rolling pin? Yep. I don't have to do that anymore now that I've figured this out. Every once in a while, I will say, your stencils could use a good bath with that Dawn Power Wash. I spray them, lay them in the bottom of my sink, give them a good scrub, and then I let them air dry. But when I'm doing a project like this, I need to be able to move on. All right, let's get this out of the way. How are we doing on time? We're good. Okay, now back to my Misty tip. If anyone missed it, is joining us late. I started with my misty here and i went ahead put my stamp on my misty door made sure and this is only because these things wiggle a little bit they're they're off by just a hair so make sure your paper fits in your misty at the bottom right corner and i always like to use my magnet and then i stamped this in toffee on my on my placemat that's in my misty uh, and that way i know exactly where my background is landing every time so I already have adhesive on the back of there. So then I can just line it up. And this is super important. Like, I think we have a background called shiplap, I think. And that one's got kind of almost like wood lines in it um, for wood planks. And if you want it straight, or if you have something that happens to have a word on it or something, this is really great because you can really see where you're, that you're absolutely perfectly straight. So we'll line that up. And this one, my original one, is with gold but i really want to try it with silver because i think blue and silver is so pretty together so let's try that with this one so definitely make sure you try do your powder pal and do as i say not as i um almost missed it if you want to test it this is how you test to make sure if you want to make sure that that background depending on how heavy-handed you are 
make sure it's dry, powder it, and then shake some embossing powder on it. And if it doesn't stick, your background is dry. Uh, if you wanna take that extra step, but if, you, if you're letting it dry overnight or for some time, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, if you're like me, when you do Christmas cards, it's kind of assembly line. You might do all your blending one night and the next day you come back and do your embossing. So have I missed anything? Oh, the video of the butterflies. Um, I just showed them. Is that what you're saying? I apologize. I'm not really sure what you're getting at. The butterflies, I guess I did not say this. Someone asked about the butterflies. They're from Beautiful Butterflies. It's a die set that got released not that long ago, but I didn't do a full video on it today. I just kind of put them together so you could see the new colors one more time. I did do have a photo that will probably go up on Facebook so you guys can see the those in a still shot again. So anyway, back to this. I've got it powdered. I know it's dry. Bring in my Versamark. ink this up and I will stamp it twice because that's what I do. Now that we have the luxury of the Misty, it's my favorite thing. And I actually think stamping it twice with my embossing really helps a lot. And this one being that it's so uh, large, stamping it twice is also very helpful also to make sure you're not missing any parts or pieces or anything. There is a little bit of leftover baby wipe down there. Got rid of that. Stamp this again, use my Just Press tool. I need to get a new one of these. My kids ended up taking mine, so I need a new one. Look, that's beautiful already. That could be so pretty. You know how I love to do clear uh, with Versamark? That would be stunning also. That would be another one to try. So, but we're gonna try silver because I think the silver was gonna be so pretty on the sour gummy. But for my, and no one will see how many different variations you made in your Christmas cards, but for me, I wanted them to look all the same so I could photograph them for the live. So, sometimes I powder twice. This one looks like it's doing really well, though. Just to make sure, I do have a spot there and I'll take a paintbrush to that, so. Another thing, I know we've talked about this before in the past. Do you guys have those little mini vacs for your desk? I cannot tell you how much I love them. Because I also do beading. Um, like, I make just earrings. I don't do anything major. Um, I just like collecting pretty beads. And I make earrings with them and mainly give them away. But uh, I use my little vac on my desk all the time. Taylor sells this little vac for your cleaning up your surface it's my favorite thing heat up my heat tool here because that's that's one of my most important tips is to heat up your heat tool let it run for a little bit and even after i let it run for a little bit this is the thing that we used to do 20 years ago when i stamped or i still stamp back when i learned to do this was to heat the back of your paper I really think it helps. Uh, it just helps grab things. If you've got a chunky embossing powder, oh my gosh, look at that. Sorry. Is it funny when... Look how pretty that is. Embossing truly is the gateway into uh, crafting, right? Because it's just so mesmerizing. Now that I've got that corner done, I could actually grab the mini mitts. I always forget to use them. Get the mini mitts in here now. So pretty. I knew I was going to like the silver. Now I've got to make a whole nother set, right? There we go. And then for me, when I'm done embossing, I look at it, like especially tipping it in the light. Can you see this spot right here? I'm trying to see if I can catch it. It's just muted, it's flat looking. That means it's not embossed all the way. So I'll come back in. Uh, again, you've heard me say it before, you do not wanna be straight, like so close to your paper. I would definitely recommend saying, you know, what am I away? 
a couple of inches. And then the other thing that I prefer to do is to work in an area because my cardstock is heated up in that area. I don't want to move on to another spot because, and right now all I'm doing is going back to any of those spots that I see are muted or dull or not shiny or look really grainy. Those are all the things to look for. And don't, don't think if it's not going, like to get closer, that's not the solution. It's just to wait. Um, it just means things are heating up. So I like to stay in one area because I feel like my paper is already warm and then I work my way around. It also makes it so that I don't miss things as easily. I don't miss areas and spots. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. Am I funny? That I think that's, I just love that. So let's, that's going to go on a sour gummy card base. And I think it's very nice to just the pop. I can show it to you on white too. Maybe you would like the white, the white. Taylor really likes a white card base. So I'll finish it up just so you can see both. Let's get my sentiment in here. And again, I said this was from the Inside Scoop Christmas Blessings. We're going to do a silver because we did gold. Let's grab this one. I had this already set up yesterday because I cut out a piece of paper that was bigger and I would rotate it so I could do my greeting on both ends. So I was embossing two at a time. Does that make sense? So this is way too big, but I'll throw this in here. So if you measure out and remembering that I'm using ovals here, that if you measure out two, that would be, you know, one on top of the other. And I would stamp, ink it, I can just even just do it this is but know that you wouldn't want to waste this much paper if you're doing it this way but I have mine set up so that I can powder my paper ink it up with Versamark especially if you're doing Christmas cards this is so important to come up with ways because your Versamark and your embossing powder is it's going to take a little bit before it's dry so you have a minute or two or several to rotate your paper and then I can do another sentiment. So I've got two done. Sorry, as I'm using the back of my hand and my Just Press tool is right here. How many of you are like, Susan, just use it. <laughs> All right, so that way I at least have two done and I don't have to worry about my Versamark drying. It takes longer. The, if you're using Versafine, uh, I would say don't wait quite as long. Maybe only do two and then make sure you do it. Make sure you go to your embossing gun. Um, just because VersaFine, that black onyx, does dry faster than a Versa Mark does. So let's shake that on. I do everything twice. Have you noticed? I ink <laughs> with Versa Mark twice. I just shook powder on twice. I don't know. It's a habit. So let's heat this up getting two done. Maybe I'll have to do the purple, the huckleberry with purple too. So my gun is warmed up already, being I just used it so I can turn this over. Should go pretty quickly. I'm tipping it so hopefully maybe you guys can see how close I am and how, if I see it start turning silver, I'm not quite ready to move on because you need it to become smooth. So kind of take your time as you move. And if you're further away, the chance of, and I say the word burning your embossing powder lightly because it's not really burning it. You're like, it forces it to almost liquefy and it goes down into your paper. Have you guys ever embossed something where all of a sudden you're like, it's flat and it looks kind of, it's not raised? just kind of flat looking that's usually because it got overheated and forced down into the paper uh, what sentiment stamp notes I'm using sorry I'll bring it back in I said it a little bit earlier it's called inside scoop Christmas blessing it is an older one um, and I think this sentiment is probably made to put on the inside of your card and you're probably supposed to use one of these on the outside but I think it's really pretty and it filled my oval a lot um, there we go making sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, I think I'm still good. So I'm gonna bring in, I'm using the 
stitched oval stacklets. I'm using two sizes of that for the centers, and I'm also using the stacklets, the petite scallop oval stacklets. Sorry, one tried to run away. Let me get it. <laughs> I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna cut this because I brought, because I brought my, I brought the little sidekick in. I love using this. I keep mine at my desk because if I don't have to run that whole entire platform of the big one through, I choose not to. <laughs> It's so funny because it's like what was old is new again, right? Ovals are a little harder to get straight is all to make sure you're... Sorry if I got my, my crazy hair in there. I kind of picked like the points of my oval. I know ovals don't have points, but the furthest out. And I'll lay my ruler on it and it always helps me make sure that I'm straight. So there we go. I have a little bit more tape. Let me see if this is too wide. It's a little too wide. I'm just gonna cut this off. I love using my sidekick when I can. There's a lot of things that don't fit to your sidekick, right? The other thing the glass mat is just brilliant for is your sidekick. Have you guys ever noticed this, that this thing really loves to stick to glass? So it stays put so well. I realized that one time after I was done blending something, I'm like, oh, this is really nice. So, so I'll set that while we've got this in here. I'm going to do all my other cutting. Grab my silver. Almost forgot. I, to, I was reaching for the gold. Caught myself just in time. So we'll do the stitched in the gold, silver. I find when I'm mass producing, I don't know, you guys, I know there's a whole thing about not wasting your paper, but if I'm mass producing, I really do find that I would rather cut my cardstock down to a size that fits my die. Um, then I don't have to worry about marring my paper, which is totally a thing when it comes to this foil cardstock. Um, and it also just kind of helps me be able to move along because I can put, if I was using the big, the big one, which I was yesterday, the big, um, the big shot, I was able to set up all three of these dies on a big shot platform and send them through so that I could get three die cuts done at a time. So obviously you wouldn't be using the sidekick because I'm not getting as many done at a time, but if you're trying to mass produce, that's something I would really have you think about is cutting your cardstock down to a size that fits them and then you can put you know, three or whatever fits on your platform through at a time. So let's set that there. I'll move this for a minute. We might need this back. All right. Do you love my mess? This is what I always say at the end of my lives. There is stuff everywhere. <clears throat> now I can find my piece of paper back. There we go. So I'm put dimension behind, I'm gonna glue these two together, but I'll put dimension behind this one and then also behind my silver. And if you wanted to save yourself time, obviously when you are mass producing, I would not do that. I would just pick one layer to put my dimension on. It'll just help save you some time. So let's put this down. I apologize, I should look at notes, making sure. Oh. Yes, actually, Cherry, I have the same thing in my kitchen. It is glass. On Our kitchen table is glass. And when my husband is home and I can't be in my stamp room because his office is connected, uh, yeah, it is nice to have a glass tabletop to do your, put down your uh, sidekick on. It's so funny to me. I owned a sidekick back in the day, sold it like on a garage sale or something. I didn't even think about the fact that we would ever bring that back and use that again because isn't bigger better and then all of a sudden smaller is better. I feel like we've gone that way with our iPhones, right? <laughs> Sorry, is it Rose? I can't quite see with all the bright lights in my face. Uh, if I made you add something to your wish list. Sorry about that. I love my, I, the wish list is one of my favorite things for companies to have. Because if it's something that you don't need today or you want it later or it's out of stock and you want to remember to get it later, I just love having that feature so that I don't have to worry about missing out on it or forgetting about it later. I love 
wish lists. So I want that to cut this out. If you ever have a piece and you don't want your sticky scissors, stick it back on the removable backing. Do you know sticky scissors? Everyone knows I hate sticky scissors, right? I'm afraid this corner is going to stick out. Yep. I'm going to get rid of that. Tape this down, and then I'm going to let you guys see both. I didn't bring a white sugar cube card base, but I did bring a sour gummy one that I will show you with a backup piece that I have laying here. Sorry, I scooched this down so I can kind of see. Oh, I just love the silver. Oh, this is my favorite. Sorry, gold. You're wonderful too. <laughs> feel like I'm picking favorites. So here it would be, oh my gosh, isn't that silver great? I love that. Or I have a panel that's white. White would be very pretty too, especially if you wanted to be able to write in the inside. That is really pretty too. But I'm gonna finish this the way I had intended. We'll put some of my tape runner down. This is old tape runner, by the way. We don't sell this anymore. We're just trying to use up some old scraps. Another thing is when I put my card front, I always lay my card base out flat. One, then I know I'm putting it together correctly, right? And I feel like then I don't have the movement of the paper trying to come up while I'm trying to center. So that's probably something you guys do, but it's something that Taylor and I were talking about the other day. I always lay mine out flat. It helps. So isn't that pretty? I love it. So uh, I won't finish making it, but let's go ahead and do this one in the silver because now I'm curious because that one turned out so pretty. This, I feel like, lends itself towards the gold, the brown, but could be pretty. Green, I feel like, tends to lean itself towards the silver too, but try. You know what would be really pretty too is blue corn. That could be really pretty too. So again, I know where the center is of this twiggy branch background and I didn't test it but if the other one was done this one should be done or done drying I should say done like I'm talking about pizza or something <laughs> good morning everyone's more people chiming in aloha from Hawaii Ooh, that would be wonderful I hope everyone is okay there let's see ink this up with Versamark I'm hopeful, talking about Hawaii, I can't even talk about it out loud, I shouldn't. I'm hopeful that I will get to go in uh, February to the Big Island. We've been there once, but we'll see. I hate even talking about it because it's gonna jinx it, but you know, something comes up, plans fall through. <laughs> I haven't even talked about it here at work or requested the time off yet because I don't wanna jinx it, right? So again, that was the twiggy branch with the silver. Let's ink emboss powder with the silver here. I didn't have any stray stuff to worry about this time to brush away, so that was good. I do at home have some bigger containers for some of my embossing powder, but it works just as well to take a scratch piece of paper, and I reuse my scratch pieces of paper for a long time until they get thrown out. So and if I had my vacuum, I'd vacuum out it all up because the, I don't know, the grittiness of embossing powder drives me crazy. I don't like it. Oh, spill some tea. I didn't bring any tea. You might have missed the beginning. I didn't bring any because Taylor is going to spill a lot of tea tomorrow. So come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. She's doing a little bonus live on Friday at 10 a.m. Central Time and Monday. And, of course, her normal Tuesday. She is going to be back. Look at that. I love it. Mini mitts in here. Uh, she is going for a surprise, surprise, maybe you guys already knew, but Friday at 10 a.m., she is going to be spilling more than just tea, so I thought I would just not show you a sample, and let you, I'm sure she's going to show you a card, walk you through some of the new products. I can tell you it's Christmas release next week, and she is going to be showing you all, not all, but some things, and then show you some more on Monday. 
and it will all go live for sale Tuesday at 9 a.m. Where is, the, oh, isn't that pretty? I love that. I really like how that turned out. And I can't finish it because I didn't bring that much silver in, but I do have my sentiment things we did too. So let me bring my cards back in. How did we do on time? Oh, we're good. Perfect. So let me bring my, I'll bring them back in. The ones that are done. So tomorrow, 10 a.m. Sorry, I'm not spilling any tea today, but like I said, Taylor's gonna have a whole bunch to talk to you about tomorrow. So join her, 10 a.m. Central. And these are my cards for today. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, someone just ordered this black. I know, I gotta, I need to get it myself. Uh, I'm a little afraid of it because it's, it's more liquidy than some of our other splatter stuff is, but I really need something when it comes to black. So thanks for joining me. I hope you test and try out and explore your new colors when you get them. And I hope you have a great day and join Taylor 10 a.m. tomorrow.